Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. This is Sports with Strawberry Ice. I'm your host, Jeff Trenopole. And as always, I'm bringing you sports from a West Side point of view right here in the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio. All right, Bengals fans, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. What are the Bengals going to do? Are they going to get in free agency? They keep saying they're going to. Well, they did. Now, it might not exactly be what we all wanted them to do, but it's still a very good move. Hopefully they're not done yet. But the Bengals signed two defensive free agency free agents. They can't officially announce until 4 o'clock today. But the Bengals made the biggest free agent play in their history on Tuesday by signing one of the best young linemen in the game in Houston's DJ Reader. They also signed former first-round pick cornerback from the Vikings, Trey Waynes. Now, the reason Reader is such a big sign for the Bengals, I think it's the most money, it's the most money they've ever given any free agent. You put Reader next to Geno, nobody's running on us. Problem solved as far as stopping the run. As far as that goes. Now, you say they gotta get an offensive line. I agree with you. They have to get offensive linemen. What are they gonna do with uh, Kirkpatrick? What are they gonna do with JB Webb? What are they gonna do with all these guys? Well, or B.W. Webb, I said J.B. Webb, B.W. Webb. Today, the Bengals released B.W. Webb and right tackle John Miller. Webb played in 15 games, started 12 of them last year, and Miller played in 13 and he started all 13. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what I think this means for the Bengals. If you're going to release a guy that started 12 or 13 of your games last year at right guard. To me, that means you either had the guy already in camp on your team that you want at right guard, or you're very close to signing that guy. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one it means. <laughs> B.W. Webb, or I'm I'm fine with him leaving, but that also I wonder if they're going to keep Fitzpatrick. Now they signed um, Trey Waynes. That bumps. Fitzpatrick to second string. Now, he's a pretty high, highly paid second string. He's not, Fitzpatrick is not a terrible cornerback. He's not the shutdown, number round, first round pick that we thought he would be. I mean, Darquez Denard wasn't either, and he he left, which is, that's fine. Neither one of those picks, I mean, they're good cornerback, good cornerbacks, good players. Neither one of them were shut down, number one, all pro guys like we had hoped they would be. Now, does, do I think that uh, Waynes is going to be that? No. I, I mean, he's been an okay, a little above average cornerback, <clears throat> which with our front four should help him. We can pressure the quarterback, you know, as long as everybody stays healthy. Pressure the quarterback and stopping the run should be two pretty good things that the Bengals are able to do next year. Yes, they still have to get linebackers. I, we are a horrible linebacker. I understand that. I I don't know what they're going to do. I hope they're going to sign one or draft one. We'll find out. But either way, Bengals fans, just be happy that we signed somebody. We signed a pretty good young nose tackle. Now, we've said this for years as Bengals fans. Nobody's going to want to come here because we're known as a cheap organization. We're not known as a not very well-run organization. We're probably going to have to overpay to get somebody. How many times have we said that? I've heard it over and over and over again. Well, we finally probably overpaid for Reader. And people are complaining that we overpaid for him. So, it's like, okay. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. I mean, they finally signed somebody. They did something. And people are still upset about it. I'm okay with it. I'm hoping it's not the end. But they got to hurry up and get going here. And maybe while I'm doing this show, they're actually doing something and I'll get to talk about it tomorrow. I don't know. But it's a good start. I like the direction. I like at least they did. I don't want to say at least they did something. Yeah, they did something, but they did something smart. It is good. It is a good move. I mean, you get him and Atkins next to each other. It's going to be a very, make our front four even better than it was before. So it's not a bad move. Is it the move we all wanted? No. Are they done yet? I hope not. We'll find out. Now, that brings me to Andy Dalton. Okay, now it's like, where is Andy Dalton going? 
Well, I know one place he's not going, and that's to the Chicago Bears. Because the Jags and the Bears have made a trade. The Jags are sending Nick Foles to the Bears, and the Bears are giving them a compensatory fourth-round pick, which gives the Jags 12 picks in this year's draft. Now, it's a fourth-round pick for Nick Foles. Yeah, Nick Foles is injured last year, but Nick Foles is also a former Super Bowl winner and former Super Bowl MVP. So, that brings me to Andy Dalton. We might have to lower our, our expectations on what we can get, especially since there's we're running out of teams that need a quarterback. Now, the Jags, this is what I know Mike Brown doesn't want to do. The Jags, since they released Blake Bortles last year and they traded uh, Foles this year, will have to absorb $18.75 million of dead money in 2020. This is after they signed Nick Foles last year for the most guaranteed money in franchise history. It's That's just throwing money away. And that's what I don't want the Bengals to do. And I know, of course, you know Mike Brown doesn't want them to do that. So, Mike Brown is trying to be smart. They're trying to do something, which is good. The thing with Andy Dalton, I don't know where he's going to go now. Because Phillips is, Philip Rivers signed, is going to sign with Indy. Nick Foles is in Chicago. Tom Brady's going to uh, Tampa Bay. Um, uh, Bridgewater's going to Carolina. So there's four teams that ha- needed quarterbacks. Oh, and Breeze is going back to New Orleans, which, I mean, everybody knew that. So five teams who potentially needed a quarterback or had a quarterback who's a free agent, they're all covered. That only leaves, I think, the New England Patriots. And to me, there's three good quarterbacks out there left. One, Andy Dalton. Two is Cam Newton. And three is Jameis Winston. Now, do I think the Patriots are going to pick any of those? I don't know. Because the weird thing is, you know, Belichick, I think, wants to prove that he can win without Brady. And Brady wants to prove he can win without Belichick. So, as you know, Tom Brady was a six-round pick. You cannot tell me Belichick knew that Tom Brady was going to be this great, the greatest quarterback ever and win six Super Bowls. I don't even think he'll tell you that. But they have another pack of quarterbacks they drafted last year in the fourth round in Jared Stedham. Now, the talks are that Belichick likes him. He also could bring a veteran quarterback in to compete for the job. Out of the three that are out there that I think would be that Belichick would consider bringing in in Dalton, Newton, and Winston. I really do think Andy Dalton is the perfect guy for that. Cam Newton is not going to go to New England and be a backup. I don't think his ego could handle that. Jameis Winston, I don't, that could be, I really think it could be either Andy or Jameis if Belichick even does anything at all. It all comes down to what does Belichick want to do and does he think he needs a veteran um, quarterback to push Stead, Stedman, Stedham, I'll get it right. Um, and to me, the guy you want that I think could buy in to the Patriot way better than Cam or Jameis is Andy Dalton. Because Jameis, I don't think, got along very well with uh, the, the coach down there in Tampa Bay. It doesn't sound like it's a very good relationship at the end. Cam Newton is fighting with the Carolina Panthers. With the Patriots moving into this new era of no Tom Brady, to me it seems like Andy Dalton is the perfect guy. He's quiet. He doesn't say much. He's confident, but if you want him to be a backup, he won't like it, but he'll do it, and he won't cause any waves. And in the meantime, he can help this your quarterback, Jared Stenham, develop. So there is... More I talk about, there is more of a possibility that I think Dalton could be the next Patriots quarterback. Could be the next Patriots backup quarterback. I don't know. But I don't think Belichick is going to give us more. If if the Bears only had to give up a fourth-round pick for um, Nick Foles, that's about, I think, as good as we're going to get for Andy Dalton, unfortunately. Now, out of the other two quarterbacks that are out there, Cam Newton. Now, he has come out on Instagram and Twitter saying that he doesn't want to leave Carolina. Well, he's 
He's either going to be traded or I tell you they're going to cut him. Now, Stephen A. Smith is talking about this. You know, who would you rather have as your quarterback going to the future with the Carolina Panthers? And he said Cam Newton over, over Bridgewater. Now, I'm kind of thinking, really? I mean, not talent-wise, if they are both healthy, Cam Newton obviously is the better quarterback than Bridgewater. But Cam Newton is coming back from his second shoulder surgery, and he injured his foot last year. Once you injure your shoulder, as the Cowboy, um, Jeff Brantley on the Reds, has said, once they cut on that shoulder, it's never the same. And I know that from experience. I dislocated my shoulder a couple years ago. It's still never the same. And I'm not an NFL quarterback or major league pitcher. I can't imagine trying to throw anything. Luckily, it's my left hand, and I'm right-handed. Um, so, and the other thing is, with Cam, if you get Cam, you have to redesign your entire offense around him because he's not... It's not a bad thing. He's just not a very accurate quarterback. He's more of a run-first quarterback, make-plays quarterback, which is also injured, making him an injured quarterback a lot. That's why he's going through the injuries he is now because he's a big dude. He takes on hits that he probably shouldn't have done. So I'm not sure if an NFL team is going to go, yeah, here, Cam, you can have the number one job right off the bat. So that, that's why it goes back to New England, where if it goes down to Cam and it comes down to Andy, I think New England would like to have Andy Dalton as their backup backup quarterback or starting quarterback, whichever one you want to do. I have no idea. We'll have to wait and see. Like I said, hopefully while I'm doing this show, the Bengals will sign somebody. All right. Now, I have talked about it, hinted about it. My wife and her family are ecstatic. I married a Floridian. Very, very excited about Tom Brady, TB12 going to TB, Tampa Bay. Now, my sister-in-law has hated Tom Brady for years. She thinks he's a cheater. Now he's coming to her team. <laughs> so, kind of comes down to this. What's your loyalty? You know, are you still going to root for your team despite not liking the quarterback who's probably the greatest quarterback ever who's won Six Super Bowls. Kind of interesting situation my sister-in-law is in. Now, I've heard, uh, not to tell you at uh, 4 o'clock, that he's going to sign a two-year deal worth $30 million. I don't know how much of it's guaranteed or any of that. That's just what I have I have heard. Now, people are like, why is he going to Tampa? Well, A.B., the head coach down there, he is the complete and total opposite of Belichick. Bruce Arians. I said A-B. B-A. Bruce Arians. Sorry. Complete and total opposite. I mean, <clears throat> Bill Belichick would have film room and he would belittle and rip everybody. And that's how he, it works. That's how he got them better. That's how he, they came up with the plays. Blah, blah, blah. Bruce Arians, him and Tom Brady are going to go on a golf course, have a Jack and Coke and figure out how to run the offense. They're gonna, it's not going to be a Chuck and Dougie. It's going to be a, what's he say? A, uh, no risk it, no biscuit is what uh, AB's philosophy is. I keep saying AB, <laughs> BA, AB's. I don't. That's a whole other thing. If he goes to Tampa, I don't. I would not do that. Antonio Brown is what I mean. Um, so why Tampa? Tampa, one. They are the Super Bowl host city this year. If it works out, Tom Brady could lead not only the team who has the second longest. Playoff drought, not winning drought, just making it to the playoffs. You know, Browns are number one, Tampa's number two. He could end that for them. Plus, it could be the first time that a host city's team actually got to play in the Super Bowl. So, you think that might make his legend go up even more? Now, is this going to tarnish his legend? No! <laughs> How many NFL legends have ended on different teams? Johnny Unitas played for the Chargers. Joe Namath played for the Rams, Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Brett Favre played for the Jets in, in Minnesota. Joe Montana, who I can't stand, played for Kansas City. No, it's not. I mean, Peyton Manning would play for the Denver Broncos. No, it's not going to tart. It, it, what if he doesn't win a Super Bowl? He doesn't win a Super Bowl there. That's, you know, it doesn't tarnish anything. But one thing he's going to have down there that he hasn't had probably since Randy Moss was with him is 
wide receivers that can freaking run and go get the ball. Now, their offensive line isn't, it's not terrible. It's not unbelievably great. But with Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, Tom Brady's got 20 years of playoff football knowledge. Three-step, that ball's gone. He's not going to need the greatest offensive line ever. He's not going to run. He's not going to run around. If they're coming after him, he's going to hit the ground or he's going to throw it away. So, yes, they need to improve the offensive line. And he's got four great wide receivers. Now, I kept saying A-B instead of B-A. The reason I'm saying that because I heard that Tom Brady wants Antonio Brown to come with him to Tampa. I really, really hope that's not true. Because you've got plenty of wide receivers. you got two tight ends. They need a running back. But, Tommy, you don't need that headache. I know he's apologized and blah, 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 blah. Dude's crazy. There's something wrong with him. I would not bring him. You're having this great... Tampa Bay is having this great euphoria that you're coming. You're coming here. You don't need to bring the negativity with you of Antonio Brown. Now, the Buccaneers season tickets are on fire. I saw a post uh, that somebody was 6,700 and something in line to try to just get tickets. (laughs) So... Pretty sure uh, Tommy's paying for his uh, $30 million contract, if that's what it is. So, it's going to be very interesting to see Tom Brady and Tampa and see Bill- Belichick without Brady and see what happens. I really hope he trades for Andy Dalton because I want somebody to take Andy Dalton because I want a draft pick for him, hopefully this year. All right, now with the coronavirus going on, we're all stuck in our house. All we can do is watch guys like me on YouTube or watch ESPN, which there's finally sports to talk about. We got football, which is good. We can talk about it together on Facebook. We have Facebook groups that you guys can check out, and i like you to check them out for me. There are three of them that I help run. We have Bearcat Country, Bengals Nation, and Reds Country. Now, they're all three really, really good groups. I post my show on there. I post my podcast. I post all kinds of different stuff on there, things I hear, things just to talk about. Other people post stuff on there to talk about. It's not just me. You can go on there, post anything about the Reds, Bengals, Bearcats on these groups, and we'll discuss them, tell them, tell you you're crazy, tell you, I agree with that, I don't agree with that, whatever. It's just fun to do because it's a sports bar in your own house because we can't go to a sports bar now because everything's freaking closed. <laughs> so, anyway, check those out. Now, this show and every show is brought to you by T-Properties. T-Properties, quality housing for quality people. Check out their website at www.tpropertiesllc.com for all your rental property needs and your rental management needs. All right, that's it for today's show. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. If you're on uh, Facebook and you're getting this uh, YouTube link on a Facebook page, do me a favor. Go to YouTube. Get a subscription. Doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe to my show. I'm at 151. There's no sports going on. I mean, no actual games. So let's try to add more subscribers with no sports. That'd be weird. <laughs> and if you're listening to me on the podcast, Apple Podcasts, they do this thing called Five Star Rating. I'd really appreciate it if you give me a five star rating and tell everybody about me. Like, subscribe, share. That's just sports, baby. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.